Good evening, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey, Adam G, your online Queen's Relational Talk Show. For today's content, I am very, very happy to be giving you this opportunity to, to get to know a very legendary woman. She's 70 years old and very proud of it. Yes, and you don't even have to ask for it because she has been defying gravity with her beauty, age, and substance. So without further ado, I am so blessed to be given this rare opportunity to interview the one and only Miss Cory Quirino. Hi, Adam. I'm so proud of you <laughs> <laughs> and happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for guesting on my vlog. Mom, you know, I've been wanting to... Today, uh, this month is still March and mm -hmm. we're still we're still in the month of March. And as we all know, March is International mm -hmm. Women's, Women's Month. month yeah. So I feel like... I'm, I feel like interviewing a very powerful and empowered woman mm. like you in celebration of this wonderful International Women's Month. So, Mom, I'm honored. I'm honored. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for saying yes. And of taking course. the time and yes effort to in doing this time. interview. <laughs> so, Mom, you know, as I was doing my research about you, right now we are at the mezzanine floor of the Grand Hyatt Hotel, right. located here at the Fort Bonifacio, Taguig City. Right, it's in a beautiful lounge. Yeah, oh, it's my, I've been here before, but I've never appreciated this whole area up right? until now. It's my favorite place for interviews. Oh, dito po. And I do work here too. Oh, Sometimes okay. I do my show here. Oh, mm -hmm. kaya pala ma'am, kasi as I was researching more about you, you work, but you once worked as a sales manager for the Hyatt and Hotel. And public relations director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, for ten years. Yeah, for ten years. So you know, good talk. Because if all for all this time, I thought you were just, uh, you were just, you know, a TV host, a beauty and wellness guru. Pero as I did nga my research, mm -hmm. you took up advertising. Yes, and I then you were I... once a banker, and mm -hmm. you also work as a sales manager. Right. Yeah, I started as a sales representative and then moved up to sales manager and then public relations director, then regional public relations director for the Philippines. Wow. Yes. Wow. And then uh, it was during my Hyatt days that I was invited by Johnny Litton to do a segment posting for his show, Oh No, It's Johnny. Oh. That's how I started my career in television. Wow. Mm -hmm. So apart, so now from being a TV host, naging beauty, naging national pageant director na rin po kayo. Mm -hmm. So looking back, ma'am, kasi as I was doing my research about you, you come from a well-to-do family. You look so beautiful e even up until this day. Thank you. Never sumagi sa'yo na talk show host ka pa. Never sumagi sa'yo na maging isang beauty queen din nung panahon niyo. Ay, nako. Sa totoo lang, 17 years old pa lang ako. Oo. Uh -oh. Sabi ng tatay ko, merong darating dito, someone's coming to the house, go to your room and lock the door. Oh, see I you. said, why, Pops? <laughs> why? He said, just do it. You know, at the time, daughters have to follow their fathers. Yes. Or else. Right? No arguments. Yes. So I locked the door. When I came out, after about an hour, he knocked on the door. You can come out now. Dad, who was that? He said, oh, that was Nelo Edilion of Binibining Pilipinas. And what about? He wanted to recruit you for Binibining Pilipinas to join the beauty pageant. I said, Dad, I'm so mad at you. Why do you have to lock me in the room? Why didn't you ask me first if I wanted it or not? Well, because I don't want you to join a pageant, but you didn't ask me. Okay, what if I asked you? Do you want to join the pageant or not? I said, no. <laughs> Why? And then he goes, oh, then I should have given you a chance to decide. That is empowerment. You see, I was fighting already for my rights. <laughs> <laughs> and that same year was the year Margie Moran joined Binibini in Pilipinas. Sayang pala, <laughs> nagbardagulang. Eh, why didn't you consider a year after... Actually, what were you I did doing not then, have huh? the inclination for it. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that one day I would be managing beauty pageants. Oh. Right? You know, the world is really such a, a curious place, right? Yeah. You just never know. So I ended up in beauty pageantry anyway. Who knew? Who knew then? Right? Yun nga, Do you think, um, kasi nga, diba, as I said, 
you work as a banker, as a sales manager here at the Hyatt. Tapos you took up advertising. Tapos naging TV host din kayo eventually for ABS-CBN. Yung so, sobrang dami nang nagawa nyo in your younger years, do you think it had something to do with the fact that you were the daughter of the former president Quirino, so Elpidio Quirino, so that's why you were doing a lot of things, you were, you know, you were trying to do a lot of things, be known for so many things right. until you finally got your what you are so known yes. for now. Actually, everything that I have done, except for joining the hotel industry and promoting tourism and travel, that was deliberate. I really wanted to work for the Hyatt Hotel, Ooh. right? Because I wanted to work for a multinational company. But my training at that time was for public relations for an advertising agency. So I was doing a lot of copy, copy work, press releases. I was doing a lot of writing. But I really wanted to work for a multinational company. That was the start. That was the only deliberate thing I did. The rest were all you would call, uh, what you call destiny. You would probably call it destiny because I didn't plan for it. Like the TV show, it was just offered to me. Beauty pageantry to manage Miss World, that was offered to me. I never, in my wildest dreams, thought of even managing beauty pageants because I didn't have the expertise, nor the inclination, or the passion at that time. But I was good at managing events. Mm. Now, I was already staging health and wellness events then. I knew what staging production work was all about. You even had a radio show, Deba, with DZMM. Yes, DZMM. I was with DZMM for 17 years mm -hmm. until they closed ABS. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the Philippine Daily Inquirer for, I think, a good number of years. I think 12 years for Inquirer. And then I'm now writing for the Daily Tribune. And I do an online show for Tribune. It's called Be Well Now. And uh, I have a show on DZRH. It's called wow. Kaya Moyan every Saturday. It is, um, it's a live show. It's in the vernacular. And it's number one in Mega Manila now. What's in the secret to your reinvention? Because you've been wearing so many hats yes, since you yes. started your career. Plus... Wow. I'm vice chairman of the Volunteers Against Crime and Corruption. Oh, yes, I remember. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, oh. So I wear many hats, and I, I really have a philanthropic bent, and that is why I'm a trustee of the PGH Medical Foundation and a director of the Red Cross Muntinlupa chapter. So that's the side of me that wants to serve, and there's the side of me that wants to develop young ladies yes to develop the hometown girl into a beautiful radiant young lady ready to f embrace the world and that's what i'm doing now and at the same time rescuing women who are victims of crime and violence and this is women's month yes. the month that we have to protect women we have to talk about women's rights and empowerment how did you discover your calling for all these advocacies that you have? And there's still so much more that I'm doing, Adam. Right now, I'm in the middle of organizing with the horticulture experts of Silang Cavite, the first Home and Garden Expo Philippines 23. It will be held at the Quezon City Circle. We're going to turn that circle into a veritable paradise to promote the foundation of health and wellness, which is green living. Wholesome, clean, green living that will also embrace sustainability and food security and environment-friendly architecture. Alam mo, ma'am, kung siguro bata-bata ka, sa dami mong advocacy, pwede ka na rin talaga maging pageant contestant. Seryoso, especially now that advocacies are so in vogue in pageantry yes. now. And it's a must. It's yes. actually a must. A girl has to stand for something or represent something to the table. And even order. male competitions have that too. Really? <laughs> yes, don't they? They talk about their advocacies as well. But not as much as the female, really? their female well, counterparts. Men empowerment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, as I was asking you earlier, how did you discover your, your passion or your calling for all these advocacies that you have been doing now? Because of one weakness of mine. I cannot say no 
<laughs> when someone asks for help, I have to find a way, if I can, to do it. I will use every energy I have to try to make it happen. Is that really? Is that because that's of the Korini nature. in you? Yes, yeah, me. Apart from being your nature, it's just me. Yes. Nakalangan medyo na sa public service. Right. Alam mo yon yung right. se- second skin na yung tumulong sa kapwa ang uh-huh. tao. Correct. Well, I'm already been a Rotarian for many years, more than twenty years now. So that's also my training as well. But the, you know, uh, I think that uh, I have to share this with you. The reason why I have to do my job well. Is because I was trained by a German boss. Oh, mm, at the Hyatt. Ah, okay, yeah. Hyatt. Imagine being trained by a German boss. How how are their work work ethics? Discipline, and commitment to your work, and to never accept average as good enough. It has to be your excellent self to be putting your first best foot forward. When you do your job, so it is probably the same work ethic that you are bringing to the entire, uh, to, to all the endeavors that In you have do, been doing. Right? So, which leads me to my next question: How do you describe your work ethic now as a pageant director for Mutianam Pilipinas? I I never lose sight of my objective, of our objective as an organization, which is to help. See, there's the service again. To help every hometown girl be discovered, mm-hmm. give her every opportunity to be developed, to bring out her talents and her assets, and then to open more doors for her, whether she wins the crown or not, the international crown or not, to open doors for her so that it can change her life. So every year, ma'am, do you go to all these far-flung provinces mm-hmm. to hold your auditions, your screenings. Yeah, but with the we're in the in the world the digital world now, so it's so easy to do your screenings digitally. Uh-huh. At the same time, uh, we're also invited by LGUs to participate or collaborate with them. So there's still the need to be physically present. It's nothing can replace physical presence. Yes. When you see a candidate, you can up uh, you can imbibe her. You can feel her energy. For me, the energy is the most important thing, her aura. How do you... So now, can you proudly say, since becoming a national director for almost a decade now, or more than a decade now, yes. pwede mong masabi na you already have an eye for spotting a, a winning beauty from the get-go? I've, I've, got, I've got... It's not really just the eye. It's the radar, your inner radar. Mm-hmm. It, your compass. Your compass is there. It's active. You know. You just yeah. know. In fact, even if I'm not working, I'm not in the office, I'm still working. Wherever I am, I'm still looking. I'm still searching. So I'm very aware of that objective, which is to find my hometown girl. To represent our country. To represent the Philippines. To the various international the pageants. Right. And the latest is you just acquired the Miss Intercon... Reacquire, kasi nga bumalik rin, bumalik yes. ulit sila sa'yo. Balik yo. mutia. Balik mutia ang Miss Intercontinental pageant. I'm very so, happy about that because on my first year with Mutia, 2019, uh, Detlef came to the Philippines to judge the pageant. And I said to Detlef, that left if you judge, you're going to start people talking yeah. about some possibility oh. of Miss Intercontinental rejoining Mutia. He says, it's all right. I can still judge. We never talked about it then. But when I received the good news from our chairman that the talks have been quite fruitful and have been concretized already into a contract, Mm. So then I was very happy, extremely pleased that finally Miss Intercontinental is back. That's nice. Bumalik sa inyo, <laughs> di ba? So what's the secret to the long, long, long-standing relationship between Mutia ng Pilipinas and Miss Intercontinental From Organization? From what I hear, because that was dur- not during my time, it was during the time, I think, of... Bibo Enriquez and Sunny, Sunny Lim, if I'm not mistaken. But they originally, uh, Miss Intercontinental was with Mutia. And mm-hmm. then they, they just somehow separated, they parted ways. And then just, it's just, parang kumbaga ay hulog ng langit. It's just, I was just told, 
this is the year. Okay? We accept all the blessings that come our way. We didn't go out of our way to achieve, or to achieve it or to get it or to acquire it yeah. or to take it away from any organization. And you both, both organizations have just celebrated their 50th anniversary. Mm, actually, oh, that's right. Right? That's right. So, so, paano yan? Now, ang dami nyo ng title. So, ma'am, now that we're back to the, <laughs> we're back to the normal, ready ka na ulit bumiyahe ulit to travel to all these pageant destinations to support all there's the girl, girls. There's more destinations to go and there's really a, a policy, a company policy that even I uh, mm -hmm. had upheld during my Miss World Day, Miss World Philippines days was you cannot not be present for your queen during her big night on the international stage. You have to be there for her. Since you mentioned Miss World Philippines, mm -hmm. uh, your former orga uh, pageant organization, now that you're here in Mutianang, Pilipinas, can you share a little bit of how the rivalry of Mutianang, Pilipinas is at right now with the other pageant organizations here in the Philippines? The truth is... Twice a year, I meet with Lorraine Shook of Miss Earth. Ooh. I meet with Jonah Jimena of uh, Miss Intercontinental Japan. And we're good friends. And we were talking. And we said, you know, there should not be any rivalry. The truth is, there should not be. Because we have one and the same goal, which is to promote the Philippines. To put the Philippines on the international stage and to be known. To promote tourism. To contribute to do our part in promoting our beloved country. You know, Lorraine said, that's really a great idea. Why don't we invite the other pageant organizers to join our group? We always meet for lunch. So I reached out already to Jonas Gafford. Jonas said, okay, let's find time. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I hope that this will involve all other pageants because that's the idea. We are stronger, as they say, together. Kaya pala si Ma'am Lorraine, panag-hold ng Miss Earth, lagi niyang ginagalugad yung buong Pilipinas for their activities. Hindi mm. lang nakakoncentrate dito sa Metro Manila. Right. It was you pala who, eh, who egg her to, to really promote <laughs> our country's tourism through her pageant. And we always exchange ideas and even suggestions. We give each other suggestions. And even si Sir Jonas din. Kasi nga, ito, yung mga ongoing preliminary activities niya. Minsan nasa Boracay. Now, they're in Palawan. I'm so happy about that. We're promoting yeah. our country. Yeah, so, talagang, ano talaga, no, ma'am? You, re you really are thriving here in the pageant industry. No, kasi pag kinonect the dots mo nga, no, ma'am, beauty and wellness go right. hand in hand with right. beauty. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. And, that's all part of empowerment. Mm -hmm. How can you empower yourself if you're sick? And True. there's such a thing as not just empowering yourself biologically or physically to be healthy. You empower your mind, your heart, your spirit. It's all part of mental wellness as well. That's true. Mm. Hello, mom. Listening to you right now, talking to you right now. And when you live a full life, and experiences so that you you know so when you share all these things talagang we're learning so many things from you and as i look back to your pageant career so yeah. to speak how do you feel when <laughs> my you know, accidental pageant <laughs> accident, how did you get involved how did you how did it all begin this ba? is the thing remember i am a young lady i was once a very young lady who was not allowed by her father to join a pageant yes right one fine day, I was with my TV crew in Kuala Lumpur to cover an event. At the time, my show was with ANC. Yeah. This elderly man approached me and said, may I speak with you after this event? I said, sure. He was a stranger to me, but he looked like a respectable gentleman. After the event, he said, his very words, would you like to handle Miss World? Philippines. Mm -hmm. I said, excuse me? A beauty pageant? And then he said, yes. Isn't that uh, being managed by my good friend Stella Arameta? Yeah. This is a tell-all story, right? This is a truth. And he said, oh, 
Not anymore from what I heard. They have parted ways. Oh, I see. And I said, you know, I think I'm the wrong woman for the for the job because I've never managed a pageant before. No, you said. We've been studying you. You're the right woman for the job. You do events. You empower women. Yes, I do. That's good enough. And you know what I said to him? I said, okay, I don't know whether I should accept the invitation or not, but may I, may I have enough time to think it over? Uh, he said, yes, you have five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Pre so, work of five yeah. minutes. Lang. So I was with my TV producer then, Vilma Selga, and Vilma said, kunin mo na, i-challenge mo ang sarili mo. Well, you see, she said the right words to me. Don't challenge me because I will, I'm up, to, I'm up for the challenge, right? So I closed my eyes and I said, yes or no. I said a prayer. Uh -huh. I said, Lord, uh, should I accept it or not? And then the yes weighed more than the no. <laughs> it was like, yeah. <laughs> and so I said, okay, yes, I'll accept it, but on one condition. Said, what is that? Let's try it for one year. If you're happy with me, and I'm happy with you, then we can continue the partnership. But if I'm not happy or you're not happy, we can part ways. Okay, can we do that for one year? He said, yes, absolutely. But I have one more request. What is that? Don't charge me any <laughs> franchise fee because I know it's expensive to stage a pageant. Uh -uh. And then he said, for you, Corey, for the Philippines, no franchise fee. You didn't pay a single franchise fee I didn't pay a franchise that? fee on the first year. Ah, okay. Just for the first yes. year. It was supposed to be two years. But because we did already well, uh -oh. first runner-up on the first year, I got a bill on the second <laughs> year. You didn't have to return to the Miss Universe. It's okay because you're first runner-up. Yeah, si so, Gwendolyn Roy. Oh, yeah. So proud of Gwen. Yeah. Did you expect her to play so high in yes. the pageant? Yes. You know why? They asked me, What's your peg? It's, I've never shared this before. Huh? Uh -oh. He asked me, who's going to be your peg for your first delegate to Miss World? I said, who's been winning the most number of titles? Let's see the country. So I studied Venezuela. I studied uh, Colombia. I studied India. I studied them. I studied all the candidates. And I said, okay, our peg is going to be Venezuela. Why Venezuela? Just trust me, okay? We're going to get the tallest candidate. And she will also be the most graceful. I pray to the Lord we get a candidate like that. Do you know Gwendolyn was one of my later uh, registrants to the pageant. She was not one of the early registrants. And when I saw her, I said, I hope she does well on the ramp. I hope she does well in q and I had not known her. I had not known her yet. But I hope. But you can tell already from the those that apply, you can tell who's going to be your top 20. You wish, because it's up to the judges in the end, right? Always, most of the time, 95% of the time, my radar is always in sync with the judges. Mm. Yes. So Gwen was my peg, Miss Venezuela was my peg. And I found out Venezuela was sending six, a six-footer, six-one. And I said, okay, we're going to send someone just as tall, if not a little tall, a little shorter. So Gwen was 5'11 and a half. <laughs> wow, ma'am. Considering yes. wala kang alam, wala ka background no. background sa pageantry. So no. parang how did you immerse yourself in studying all the prototypes of these countries? Like I studied only the winners. I studied the, the winning countries, the front runners. But I did not listen or read any, uh, any social media comments because it, I was a newbie, a neophyte. And I knew I would be criticized because I was new. What did I know about pageantry? I will fail because the blue crown is cursed. They told me that. I said, listen, everyone around me, I don't want you to report to me what you're reading in social media. Why? Shouldn't you know? Let them talk all they want. I'm focused on the crown. So on the first year, we were first runner-up. After the first runner-up, what was my deal? 
if you're happy with me and, and you're not happy with me, that sort of arrangement, right? Yeah. After winning first runner up, I said, oh my goodness, I have to go for the crown. There's no compromising here. We have to go for the crown. And so the same policy applied. I didn't want to read anything. I had tunnel vision. I was focused on the blue crown. So on the third year, Jonas Gafford calls me. Corey, I have a candidate for you. Would you take a look at her? I'd like you to meet her. So I did. I had coffee with Jonas and he brought Megan. And I saw her and I just told her, would you stand up for me, please? Because we were seated. So she stood. It was the way she stood. She carried herself. The bearing. Remember, yeah. I was not looking for a perfect beauty. I never do. I never look for the perfect beauty in, a, in pageantry. Mm -hmm. I look for the total package. The minute she stood up in front of me, and that bearing, it was the bearing of a queen. Ooh. Yes. So I you said, Jonah, she should join Miss World Philippines. Thank you for bringing her to me. She should join. And take her chances with the rest of the other strong candidates we had. We had very strong candidates that year. Janice Lubina. Yeah. Yeah. Janice was giving Megan a run for for the crown. Yeah. I it was only in the Q and A. So you, you only, so both were outstanding and astounding as candidates. I remember that. I yes. remember that. Bakbakan sila doon. Mm. Yeah. And they were both radiant on stage. The judges were confused. They said, we're having a hard time. I said, just do your best as judges. That's great. Yes. Love. So, but you know, as fate would have it, it was really meant for Megan. And she did so well. Still and, so proud of her. And for that, you'll forever be etched as the woman who really, who was instrumental in bringing home the Philippines' yeah. first Miss I'm, World I'm crowd. happy about that. It was under my stewardship that Miss World Philippines delivered the, the blue crown. The elusive blue yeah. crown. You know how ecstatic everyone was? It was like Christmas, the day Megan was crowned Miss World. It was like New Year's Eve in the yeah. Philippines, no? When she won. That's and I'm glad that every pageant fan was so happy. Isn't that the most important thing? You made everyone happy. You raised yeah. the flag. Super. Mm. Super, ma'am. So, in nga, ma'am, as much as, you know, you were in a very good ride towards uh, towards your job as a Miss World Philippines National Director, apparently, three years after, you had to quit. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, there are ups and downs in pageantry, and you can never tell, really. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel your candidate is the front runner, yeah. even if at that time during Catriona's uh, bid for yeah. the Miss World Crown, I remember I was seated beside, was that Brazil? And then was it India and the several other directors. countries? Yeah, national directors were around me. And they said, to me, one of the countries, no, I can't remember which of the countries, but one of the strong countries said, Corey, we feel this is a Philippine win again. And I said, I'm praying for a Philippine win, but why do not I feel 100% about it? You. Oh, that's interesting. I man. had this, as you say in Tagalog, no, kutub. I could not explain it. We were all ecstatic. We knew already that Philippines was a contender for the crown. We knew it already. But when she placed fourth, that was really, especially for Katrina, it was disappointing because even for the other national directors, they felt that it was a Philippine win. But then again, in pageantry, you can never tell. Ultimately, the judge's decision is final. You have to respect that. Mm -hmm. And you already, did you already had an idea that the whole Filipino fandom was deeply oh, sad about the outcome? That's what Catriona was saying, crying on stage. Embracing the flag, you remember? Yeah, but that at the same time, you couldn't do anything no, about it. I couldn't even get to her on stage, I wanted to hug her. Yeah. 
So now that you know you, you're in a new pageant organization, what lessons from your first pageant uh, directorship that you learned that you are now applying now here in the Philippines? The same thing you would if you were a mother, a parent. Your daughters, because I consider them like my daughters. Every candidate I consider my daughter. So I always tell the Mutia candidates, you are a Mutia candidate, win or lose, you're part of the Mutia. Parent, a mother, has to learn that bitter lesson. Your daughters, your children, are not your own. Yeah. And when it's time, you have to let them go. So once they win the crown, you have to let them go and pray for the for the best for them. How do you see Mutia five years, ten years from now under your stewardship? Hopefully, with the strong support of our chairman, Fred Yuson, who is becoming more passionate, as much as as, as passionate as I am about pageantry. Hopefully. We can see Mutia growing bigger, stronger, and uh, more relevant. I want. I really want to shoot for relevance. We want to make a difference. More titles, perhaps, <laughs> in the near. Well, um, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We just never know about titles. Depends on the owner of the title. If they want, they feel that your organization is deserving of their title. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're happy with Miss Intercontinental, and uh, we're not handling Asia Pacific anymore. Oh, yes, and uh, so Miss Intercontinental was a welcome development. Yeah, to uh, the growing Mutia family, and then soon we'll be announcing two more titles. Uh, soon, very yes. soon. Yes. So, ma'am, as one of my last few questions. Uh, now that you're yeah you're enjoying uh, so much of your time here in Mutia and Pilipinas, how would you encourage what uh, how would you encourage all the Mutias, the potential Mutias out there, the aspiring beauty queens out there to prioritize Mutia if ever they would like to make it big uh, or embark a successful fashion career? See, you know that we'd like we take pride in knowing that Mutia ng Pilipinas is the first step of most beauty pageant aspirants, beauty queen aspirants or aspiring beauty queens. It's always the first step of every aspiring beauty queen to join Mutia. Those who have never had any pageant experience, those who just won their provincial pageants or regional pageants or city pageants, we welcome them. Even if you have no experience, we welcome you because this is the challenge and this is why I accepted Mutianam Pilipinas because I wanted to be challenged to, to develop an organization to make it grow stronger and bigger. And uh, this is where Mutia offered me the challenge I was looking for when I was at the crossroads at mm -hmm. the time of uh, Miss World Philippines. And the chance to be able to be given the chance to reach out to the proverbial hometown girl. Yes. Oh, this is to me so fulfilling. You should see the light in the eyes of the candidates when we pick them to mm -hmm. join Mutia. It's like they graduated all over again or they're about to graduate. You see the sparkle in their eyes because now you know that you made them already happy one step closer to their dreams. No, mom. Iba talaga. Mom, Grabe, sobrang bilib ako sa tenacity, sa passion mo in navigating Mutia ng Pilipinas to, be, to reach its potential or to be at its very best uh, in the years to come. So, that's my final question, ma'am. At 70, with so many things that you have accomplished, what else does a Cory Quirino would like to achieve? Or Adam. something that she hasn't done before that she would like to do? <laughs> Remember, 70 going on 57. <laughs> <laughs> what have I not done? I think eventually, I would like to expand my health and wellness. I think eventually, I'd like to expand my health and wellness advocacy to a bigger stage. 
which is why we're embracing the Home and Garden Expo Philippines to promote sustainability, yeah. food security, and uh, green architecture. So you see, my health and wellness advocacy is growing, it's expanding, it's transforming, it's redefining itself, it's growing bigger. And so it also involves every aspect of living. My real dream is to see a healthier Philippines. That's true. To raise the Philippine flag for health and wellness. I'd like for healthcare services to reach every barangay, every remote barangay, so that every Filipino can avail of good and proper health care services. I believe in education as well. So education and uh, health care, they go hand in hand. And I'd like to see that dream of health and wellness to grow bigger. Even if I'm in the private sector, I can work with the government on that to promote health and wellness. That's one of my biggest dreams, to take it to the national stage. And number two, I would really probably see myself later on devoting 100% of my time to philanthropic work. So I'd like to work for an, a formidable foundation that can make an impact on the lives of every Filipino. And I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Ms. Cori Tirino. I had so much, I had so much fun really oh, getting to know you that. deeper in this interview i hope that you know a lot of people watching this, especially the uh, younger women of our generation will be inspired to follow your footsteps to really make a huge difference in the lives of the many not just more about you know doing something for themselves in enriching themselves but also to give back to the community once they have been able to do the same for themselves right adam and we're all here together so let's do this together I'll share all my dreams with you and your followers. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, ma'am. Maraming salamat po. At mabuhay po tayong lahat. <laughs>